came out cold. You know, we, we couldn't throw it in the ocean at the first quarter. And, you know, those are the situations where you def your defense got to carry you and keep you in games uh, and give you a chance to, uh, for, to, you know, for that offense to come back around. And um, you know, that's what we challenge our guys to do uh, throughout the first half. And, um, you know, really at halftime, we made some, some adjustments defensively, uh, you know, to, to slow them down a little bit and, and really had a great defensive second half. I think it's early, but you have a lot of guys shooting the three really well. Uh, you, you've spoken about some of them, but even Caruso, without that, without that offseason, like what does that give you to have him hitting shots consistently with that second unit? It seems like it goes, uh, you know, one through ten, one through eleven. Yeah, well, we have so many guys that are so versatile. You know, uh, not only both, uh, they're two-way players. Um, you know, can can carry their own on the offensive end and get it done defensively, but the the offensive versatility. Right, guys that you know, there's not a lot of one trick ponies on this team. You know, guys that can, uh, you know, put it on the deck, make plays in pick and rolls off, the, off of pin downs, attack the paint and make plays off the bounce, but also uh, carry that threat off the basketball, you know, with, uh, with second side threes. And, you know, when you're playing with guys like Anthony Davis and, and LeBron James, those guys are, are perfect complements. And, you know, uh, we're, we're continuing to focus on shot quality. And as a result, you know, we're shooting well from, from behind the arc. Okay, Kyle Boone, please. Um, you guys came out of that third quarter uh, with, on a 15-0 run, that timeout. Um, what did you say in that timeout that clearly inspired the 15-0 run and shut the Pelicans down? No, there's nothing I said in the timeout. You know, we just we knew what we had to do differently in the second half. Uh, you know, with our defense, and um, you know, they came out and I think we gave up an and one and a, and a three. Uh, to start, and that, that's not what we were looking for. But you know, our guys are motivated at halftime just to come out and be better. Um, you know, knowing that you know if, if it's a potential night where the shots not falling, and our defense got to carry us, so they really just want to elevate their play. And and just as a quick follow, up what do you think that says about the patience of the team to sort of hang in there for that moment in the game? Yeah, well, we know it's a 40 minute, 48 minute game, and um, you know we got a great deal of belief in ourselves. Uh, you know, some games are going to be easier than others. Some games are going to have to grind out. You know, things are not going to quite go your way. You know, like I said, the shots weren't falling. The ball was bouncing away from us on every rebound. And, um, you know, we were struggling to get stops a, a little bit early in the game. So, you know, you just be patient. You stay the course. You know, you make necessary adjustments. The road trip. I would just settle it in. You know, that first game after a road trip was always kind of difficult, always kind of challenging. So. You know, we was able to uh, just flip the switch, start to get a defensive stop, get on, rebound, and run, got to our game, and was able to change the game around. So uh, we got back to playing our, our style of basketball. All right. You know you find good. yourself on being able to. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Hey, finish off. Can I follow up quick. Okay. Yeah, we know you pride yourself on being able to play as many minutes as needed, uh, you know, 365. Does it help, though, uh, to have, you know, not to have to play over 30 because you're up by 20? Is that stuff that you can sort of build up and save for later in the season, or is it irrelevant? No, man, I'm, I'm 36 years old, 18 years in the league. Ain't no safe for something for later on in the season. Uh, you know, my body is ready to play whatever I need to play throughout the course of the game. Um, I go um, hard while I'm out there, and then uh, I start my treatment after the game. So uh, I wish I could bank time. You know, I wish uh, I wish I was Justin Timberlake um, in that movie where I could bank some time, but uh, I cannot do that at this point. Okay, on to Kyle Goon, please. Uh, LeBron, at halftime, um, I think the Pelicans were shooting 61%, and you guys were shooting 40%. You were down by a point. You guys were winning turnovers, free throws. What do you think you demonstrate when you are able to hang in games and eventually win games by competing in ways that aren't just shooting? Well, like I tell you all the time, every game has its own challenges, you know, and uh, every game is different, so you got to be able to adjust. Um, they came out and they shot the ball extremely, uh, extremely well to start the game. B.I. was eight for nine at halftime. And, you know, Zion was getting into the paint. They did a great job of, uh, you know, just uh, you know, playing some really good basketball in, the, in, in that first half. So, he, you know, just came in in the second half with a little bit more, tried to slow him down a little bit more, uh, give him some different reads. Um, but we stayed in the game in that first half. Like you said, we was able to get to the free throw line. We was able to turn him over and get uh, some fast break points. So that definitely helped. Okay. Dan Wojcik, please. Hey, LeBron, what's your favorite part about where this team is at 14 games? What, what do you like most, what you're saying? Uh, that we continue to, to get better. Uh, I feel like we've gotten better every game. Um, you know, we continue to learn each other. And I told you guys that our, our film sessions, 
you know, um, and our and our games are kind of going to be like, you know, practices as well because we're we're a close, uh, you know, a new group you know, for the most part. You know, we got five uh, five guys that's been in the rotation this year that, you know, was not in the rotation last year, and, and Dennis Dominguez, West, uh, Mark Trez, and, and, and Taylor. So uh, we continue to, uh, you know, the more minutes we get, the more games we get, the more uh, you know opportunities we get on the floor, um, and then the film session just helps our helps our growth. Okay, Bill Oram. Hey, LeBron, uh, could you talk us through the putback dunk after the, the coups miss? And then as, as a secondary question, you know, you are 36. At some point, you're supposed to stop doing things like that. Is, it, is, is there anything physically that you feel like you can't do that you could have done 10 years ago? Um, yeah, but I wouldn't tell you that. Um, um, you know, but I continue to put myself in, in the best condition I can be in. Uh, you know, I train my body and I train my mind every single day. Um, you know, I come in into the... And, you know, into the arenas or, or the facility, and, and I get in a lot of extra work, um, you know, uh, preparing my body, preparing my mind. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can continue to, to do what I'm you know, doing right now at 36 um, and see what happens. Um, but I tell you, I don't think that I can go to 46. Um, you know, we can go from 26 to 36, but um, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think I can go to 46. Um, and I also don't think my wife would like that pretty much. Uh, she wouldn't like that either. Okay, Dave McMenamin. Another one? Well, Brad, this is the, uh, I think, the second highest three-point percentage of your career thus far. I mean, we're only 14 games in or whatever. You made a couple tonight. You go perfect from the free throw line. Earlier in the week, Frank Vogel said, you're the best shooter on the team. There is a guy on the team tonight who moved up the top 10 list of all-time three-pointers for the Lakers and KCP. Are you the best shooter on the team? Have you ever been the best shooter on a team before? And uh, where does KCP rank in that uh, conversation? Uh, I mean, we got a lot of great shooters on the team, man. KCP, uh, you know, great shooter. Um, you know, Wes Matthews, great shooter. Kuz can shoot the heck out of the ball. Dennis Menace can shoot the ball as well. AD can shoot the ball. So, we got a lot of great knockdown shooters. Now, obviously, if, if someone say bet, I'm going to take my, you know, obviously you guys know I'm going to take myself. Uh, you know, that's just the competitive nature in me and, and the work ethic that I put into my shot. But uh, I feel real good with my shot right now, both from the free throw line and also from the three-point line. And, you know, I want to continue that, you know, just uh, continue to uh, give defenses, uh, you know, different, uh, different, different styles of my play. You know, uh, playing pick and roll basketball, uh, you know, playing in the mid-range, playing in the post, uh, getting out on the break where I've always been pretty good. So, uh, you know, continue to keep the defense off balance will help our team in the long run. Okay, last two quick questions. We have Brad Turner. What's up, Brian? What's up, B? Hey, look, when Dennis is playing defense like he did in that second quarter, what does that do for the team? And how disruptive was he out there? I mean, you, you, saw, you saw the energy, man. And, you know, right now without fans in Staples Center, which we miss so much, man, just having a defender like what, like Dennis Domenech did, being able to pick up full court and get like two or three consecutive steals or deflections to get us out on the break, get us into uh, – he got us right back into the game. So, you know, big time on his part, man. He's been doing it all year for us. And, you know, it's, it, it just – it takes the offense, um, you know, posing offense out of a lot of stuff that they want to do, either coming out of timeout, having a set play, we able to disrupt that and uh, disrupt that with Dennis uh, being on the ball and uh, – you know, just leads to a lot of energy for our ball club. Okay, and last question, Melissa Rowland. Hey, LeBron, I have an off, I have an off the court question for you tonight. Um, right. You've obviously been very outspoken for a long time about politics and social justice. I'm curious if there was a, a particular moment where you said, "Enough's enough. I don't care who I alienate." After something specifically happened, where you're like, "That's it. I'm speaking out." Um, I believe when I was in Miami, it was a Trayvon Martin situation. Um, you know, just uh, hearing about that story, um, having two sons of my own, and uh, thinking um, if I send my kids out to, to the store and they never returned. And, and then the information that I got back was the information that I heard in the Trayvon Martin case, um, how, how heartbroken, how mad, um, how disappointed I would have been, um, not only with my community at that point in time, but with, uh, you know, the police, uh, uh, the policing, um, either if they had a badge or not, uh, the, the neighborhood watch or whatever the case may be during that point in time, um, that was the moment where I knew that uh, it was much bigger than just basketball. And myself having a platform that I had and us as the Miami Heat had at that point in time, uh, we spoke on about that. Uh, you can go back and look at a picture of us having our, uh, we took a picture with all our hoodies on 
um, and just showcasing that just because we got a hoodie on, that doesn't mean that you that we are a criminal, um, that we are are, are someone that uh, means harm to anyone, um, and it's just a piece of clothing. Um, so um, I believe at that very moment, that's when it um, you know began for me because it hit home for me uh, when I thought about Bronny and Bryce. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thanks so much, Ron. Here it is, right behind me. <laughs> Most fouls in playoff history. Will Smith. I mean, Robert Ory. Man, looking smooth. Kareem I got Shaq one. Shaq and Tim mixed up. My Shaq bad. two. Robert Ory three. Tim Duncan.